like, how you uh, been? I'm good. Good. Like how have you been? You I mean, you've been around. I know. You haven't been around. You guys left. You you three left. And then you came back and then I left. And now we're all back as one big happy family. There's not a happy family without Gaetano. Oh, that's true. That's right. He's not here. What do you have to say? What I have to say that I feel much better right now after going out with Gaetano with a bunch of other friends that we have old timers and I got sick and I, I got food poison. That's why you feel great. Oh, I feel so he was good probably, right now. It was probably, you know I what it was? I was going to die. Oh my God, what'd you eat? Uh, I mean, don't say where because it's been a while. I know. I wanted to say where. No, I wanted no, to. No, I, no. I think I'm going to say it. No, I'll say I think it. I'm going to say it. This place sucks. Go say it. Say it. Say, say it. Don't it. Say it. La Cucina. <laughs> Where is that place? It's, it's South Jersey. It's some oh, garbage. forget about it. That's what happens when you go to Jersey. Oh, God. You never. know what I bet it was? What? I bet it was one of the people that watched the podcast, like an Inter fan that poisoned you. That could have been because I was the only one that got sick. <laughs> <laughs> they said, when no, they gave they you the told dish, you they not said, to eat. The, the chef made this special for you. Did they say anything like that or no? Mm. That's because you ate all that raw octopus. Were you no. wearing anything like football no, related? No, no, no. Milan? No, actually, I had a Milan uh, shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Actually, I had a Milan, Milan shirt. I'm, I'm, I was, uh, not, but not, it was a little local over here. That and something that's enough. That's enough to get and you, you sick. You went to an Italian restaurant. Mm. Anyway, are you still feeling sick, though? Uh, much did better, you, much better. What no, do you think I'm here for? I'm saying, did you get sick from the news that just happened? What news? Huh. Oh, boy. There's Wait no till you hear this. Did you thought you were sick before. Bullshit. You better get some sugar and water. It's not sick. It's not bullshit. I'll check the news right Come now. No, no, we'll, we'll tell you. We'll tell you the news. Go ahead, tell me the news. So for everybody watching, we are recording this right as the news has come out. That's just broken uh, in the past couple hours, which is pretty ridiculous. Pete and I were venting about this uh, off camera. We'll get into the reasons. It seems like Paolo Maldini is leaving Milan, is leaving AC Milan. All right. And Masara. <laughs> It's probably the new project of this uh, this new guys, uh, these new Americans that they think they know what uh, the soccer is going to be about money and about marketing and all of that stuff. And that's, uh, I think, the next step, uh, hopefully, for the better. But I don't think it's going to be for the better. For uh, They're crazy to let Maldini go. They, there was already problems between Maldini and the Milan ownership. Last right. year, remember, their contracts were going expired. Right. There were question marks if they were going to remain. They had this meeting and they said, let's go forward. Now Milan, they went from winning the Scudetto to finishing in a top four position. Mm -hmm. They went far in the Champions League. They went to the Champions League semifinals, which to me is is a good season. They got Champions League football. Whether they got it because Juventus lost the points, doesn't matter. They got into Champions League. They got into the semifinals. They had a terrible transfer market in the summer. Mm -hmm. That's really where I feel like things broke down. I don't think so. That's not the reasons. uh, Hey, anybody can make a... First of all, it's not it's not a, a terrible transfer market because uh, it's the first year. This kid here is still uh, too green in order to be uh, to be judged on the first year. Tonali didn't do well in the first year, so I would say uh, AC Milan is not giving giving up on the kid. So, uh, but it, you have to say it is a terrible transfer market because you can't think of one player that was signed that had an impact into the season. Origi didn't do anything. Yeah, Adli didn't bring anything to the table. Well, Vranks they didn't play didn't play. They didn't play it. But that's to say they probably yeah, didn't play yeah. because they didn't have it. And I think ciao, ciao, ciao. I think that a good start. for me, Maldini must be looking at this and saying, I don't want to have to work with pennies anymore. We won the Scudetto. We're in Champions League again. He probably wants to step up and say, we need to start being able to spend money and signing players. Mm. And I'm sure the Milan management said it's probably going to be the opposite. What do you think? No, I agree. I think it comes to the point where Maldini understands like to bring this project to the next level unfortunately you're gonna have to spend some money Mm. you need to be able to have certain players that are going to during a a, a tough season you know whether it be within Serie A or even in a Champions League campaign when the 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 going gets hard those guys come up and they're gonna find the goal they're gonna be able to to win something I think Maldini did an amazing job with with this Milan team you know the year before obviously was a miracle for me to win the Scudetto, they had you know all their odds against them, and they were able to do it. <coughs> able to you know uh, during the time they they lost Donnarumma and found a perfect replacement, if Great not point. better replacement for the team. You know Rafa Leao, what what he's been able to do, he just and then, renewed, and then this year obviously being able to renew because that was a <coughs> big question mark with Milan, you know, and so he kind of navigated all that and. Um, you know, like I said, it's just strange to me that he leaves this project uh, too soon. 
you know, and, and, I, and I really think it comes down to, like Marco said, it's about the money. It's about, you know, uh, you know, a com- conflict between the ownership and the sporting mm-hmm. direction and what direction they want to head into. You a direction what? without Maldini is not a smart direction. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. This is, I, I saw some of the writing already on the wall because, uh, like you said before, there was a minor little uh, skirmish between him and the new ownership. And then... Why Maldini worked so hard? I guess he wanted to leave on a good standing. Why did he work so hard until the last few days to sign Leao? I mean, he was the one. I'm He's telling a professional. you. He was the one that signed Leao. If Maldini was not getting into in the head of these guys that you need to be here, you need to do this, blah, 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 blah. Maldini was the one instrumental to make a AC Milan sign for a Leao for a longer for a long contract. And, uh, and then I guess he must have realized that I said, hey, listen, I did what I called the new ownership idea. It's not what I have in mind. So uh, maybe the departing. I don't think they're going to be departing in a, in a, in a bad in a bad way. But mm-hmm. nevertheless, uh, nevertheless, not between, not between him and Milan. Between him and the ownership of but Milan. But that's what I'm saying. I think that that is what yeah. will be broken. Yeah. yeah. But that's a. I know we talk about American ownerships a lot, and we've gotten very excited at times. Mm. I will say this is one of the problems with American ownerships. Some of them come in and they're just looking at bottom dollar. Yeah. They're not looking at the long-term investment and they think that, you know, you could keep signing players for a little amount of money and sell them. Like, it, it's not replicable. Oh. It's not as replicable as it is in America as it is in mm. Italy or in Europe, in European football in general. But aside from that, you're also AC Milan, right? Yeah. This is a, a, a team that franchise in the world. seven Champions Leagues. This is a team that's used to being on the top and going to be competing for every single thing. So you're not... You know, it's like saying, uh, you know, we used to shop on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan, and now we got to shop on, you know, on uh, Fifth Avenue, Brooklyn. No, no disrespect, but mm. that's that's the He's talking the, bad the about issue. our neighborhood. That's, that's issue. the issue. That's the issue because you had top of the line everything AC Milan, so now bargain shopping, you know, on on the transfer market window. Mm. So I, I would, I would, then, no, I would it's then, the truth. Yeah, I know, Anton, I, it's the truth. This year, listen. especially this summer. You know, aside from the 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 money, you know, whatever spent on the Catalar, right? And maybe it was a little too much, but they went after somebody that they wanted. And like you, I agree with you. You can't be a one year bum. You have to have that second year to 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 show yourself. But aside from that, they had fifty million dollars to spend. You saw at Chelsea, they spend fifty million on one player. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So like, you have to have something where hey. You just, especially especially last year where Milan won the, the Scudetto, reward that team and say, hey, let's make this into a cycle. Let's make this into a winning project. Let's go buy a right winger that we don't have. A striker. Let's go buy Another a striker because Giroud is 30, yeah. whatever years old. Ibrahim was just 40 years old. Like, there's a lot of things there that I think uh, Maldini, because of his professionalism and his love and admiration for AC Milan, that's why he continued to the end because the guy is is a living legend and is it, it stems from his family. Did his they have a replacement already? Or uh, they're talking about Tare. Tare is a great guy. I also heard Furlani come. Be, Tare, just Tare there. is the one CEO. of the. Tare. Yeah, but he's not a soccer guy. Listen, I don't know exactly. What he went to Bocconi. They he's said a, something with with the Gazzetta. That's Tare, what can't be. Would, Tare yeah. in terms of scouting and yeah. intelligence, it, it's a, to me, it's one of the best that we have in Serie A. He was with Lazio for I think seventeen yeah. years. He announces that he's leaving uh, today. Mike, where do you see this uh, argument? Do you think it's more of a? Uh, a Maldini side. You had that famous quote. Remember, what does Maldini know? <laughs> which right now you look like the genius behind the behind the saying. But jokes aside, which side do you take? Is it the Milan management or is it Maldini? No, I think I take Maldini side on this, and I respect Maldini for not staying. I because I think he knows what his worth is, and he knows he doesn't want to be associated with a club that. If they don't follow his what what he thinks, that he doesn't want to continue with that project, even though despite all of his love for Milan, you know, he has to step aside, put his interest first and not tarnish his name now that he's trying to, he built something very good when he was together. And that's because Milan and him aligned when it was a different board. And now things didn't align. So I give him a lot of respect for stepping aside now. And to be honest, uh, I, I agree with almost everything you said for the most part in terms like 
a lot of times Milan are treating themselves as if they're a mid-table Serie A team, and that's not what they are. They they should treat themselves like one of the best teams in, in football, which is what they are. And I think that's what Maldini wanted, and they didn't see eye to eye in that. So that's what that's where I see it. And I think as a, for all for the little information we know, I think I think Maldini's right up to this point because I do think it's an economical thing and they don't see eye to eye in that. Do you think, so step on do you side. think the Scudetto, winning the Scudetto, <clears throat> because that was really the beginning of the project. They won it way before they were expected to. Do you think that hurt their expectations a little bit? Yeah, because I think they won it prematurely and by winning it too soon, it was almost like, okay, the project was to win maybe a Scudetto in the next five years and they won it a little too early and by doing mm-hmm. that I think that kind of hurt them in a sense that oh we weren't supposed to win it that soon and now okay what do we do with the rest of the, the revenues didn't or, match up yeah. exactly so maybe if they want even though they jumped the gun and they won early maybe in the long term that does affect them because look at them now I don't think Maldini I think if they didn't win the Scudetto I think Maldini will still be there because they would have followed that project personally this, yeah no this is personally this is totally I ridiculous I don't know Mike as much as I like you I don't know I don't agree with you uh, okay, 100% <laughs> uh, winning is always good whether you win ahead of the, the, the schedule, when did you win in after think, the schedule? But he, we're just talking about like a management perspective. It's like it's that like a, a goal, business. Let's say you have a forecast, goal. Antonio, yeah. in your business. Yeah. Your forecast is to hit X number within five years. Sometimes if you hit it too soon, the project goes a little bit all over the mm-hmm. place. And now the, the goalpost changes, right? Maldini went from saying, all right, we want to try to win a Scudetto within five years. Mm-hmm. Wait, we have this team. I want to be more competitive. I don't want to just be able to compete one year. I want this year that he wanted to be more competitive. Mm-hmm. He wants a... a uh, squad depth that's greater so that they could go further in the Champions League, well, don't which is also, rightfully so. The new group just came in now within that. We're talking about year. three, five, six months so, with the, the new group. So all of a sudden, that, that has been also, I think, difficulty because what happened was when Maldini was working with the old group or the prior administration and the new administration, now all of a sudden you're talking about two conflicting ideas or two um, different projects. And, you know, I hope that nothing happens but the AC Milan fans by you taking away Maldini there's a lot of fans that that have a a strong admiration for Mm -hmm. for Maldini so you know if things don't go the way that they're supposed to you're gonna see a lot of unhappy fans and a lot of protests and like the curva you know we already seen it with the players but the management's gonna be uh you know really really uh, looked at, magnified. Every little decision is going to be magnified, um, and and it's going to be an issue for me, especially especially the fact that you just bought the team, right? You you made a, a significant investment in buying the team. You have to win over the fans. Sometimes it is a little bit of you know populism, right? You have to make them happy. But you should have the first year that you just win the school that like go out and buy a nice player that the Milan fans are going to be happy. Cool about and everyone's going to be on your side so you it's, have a lot of people now that are going might be against you s- soon fence. if if things don't, don't maldini represents up. the milan fan Listen. Yeah. maldini represents a typical milan fan so okay. it's basically saying if he doesn't agree with the direction of the management yeah, why should we why all of us yeah. we are with maldini if he can't see it and he built a winning project that means that there's a crack in this foundation more more likely than not all right, here's, here's, the, here's the deal, okay? What that's, this is the deal, okay? Thank you for uh, allowing me to, to, to absorb this, uh, this thing. But now, finally, this whole thing is sinking in, in uh, into uh, my system. Here's what I see right now. Right now, we've been talking, in our terminology that we're using on this table right now, it's all in terms of project, economic, feasibility, and this and that. It's always, we're talking about money, 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 money allocated mm-hmm. to uh, maybe buying a, a better player, a more expensive player, a more established player. All right, so it's an economic project. It's not a sporting project. Now, if you get rid of Maldini, this is what I think that they've been doing, those those uh, idiots that we got on boards right now. By you getting rid of Maldini, and you want to bring some of the name like Tare or Giuntoli, like Juventus is doing it, they are giving a lot more importance to the sporting director in terms of scouting. So 
maybe at a good point before I said, I see Malang didn't do a, a great job uh, into the market last year. They want to try to bring somebody else, despite, you know, that all the, all the fame that Maldini and all the clouds that he, he brings within himself and the fact that uh, he's giving a lot of inputs uh, to the to the player personally and uh, he goes to the locker's room and he goes to the training and all that stuff. So uh, apparently those Americans, they are looking at, at, the, at this new project like, hey, we want to, we want we are result driven. So, and they see that the AC Milan, AC Milan, instead of making a step forward, that he took a little bit of a step back. Even though we made it to the semi final of, of the Champions League, the team didn't play as well as Anto, it, we was expected. He's, to he's play. working with pennies. He, I know. Has, he has to make every dollar work like $10. And you can't hit on everything. Look at the ones that he hit with, which are already incredible. Manyan. Yeah. become one of, if not the best goalkeeper Leal, in the world. Leal. He's a goalkeeper of France now. Theo Hernandez. Leao looks like one of the best. Theo, Theo Hernandez. Hernandez. He went to Ibiza to bring Theo Hernandez. I mean, Tonali, getting ben Tonali Sarah. early. Ben Acer. He did this with so many. Tomori. Right. There's Kalulu. There's so many examples that you'll find that the Milan directors prior found these talents. Mm -hmm. Okay, they met, well, CDK hasn't been great. It's one year. Yeah. Relax. Yeah. It's 35 okay. million. There are so many other clubs oh, that yeah, they yeah. throw out 100 million and the guy doesn't hit right away. Of course, that's Maguire. not where Milan are at. Look, but, Vlaovic. Right? Maguire. Nah, okay. oh, Vlaovic. 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 But Vlaovic. At, the same, at the same token, you have, to, you have to back it up with your actions. And I think for Maldini to leave, it's because of that. Anyway, let's move on. I know well, that wait, was a breaking news. Let's finish up this thing here. Let's we finish just up. finished up. So Maldini left. He was not fired. We'll find out as the dust settles. Yeah, I'm sure we'll find out the exact you're reason. Leaving, you resign from your position because you do not agree with management. Another thing is where you've been fired. We don't know yeah, yet. Yeah, but I think at this point, there's, I don't think it's result driven because this Napoli team was historic. Milan made the the, the Champions League. They were in the semifinal, so it can't be result driven. It has to be yeah. the disagreement, yeah. disagreement, yeah. And, and, so, thing. and so whether it's a firing or a release, we'll, we'll we'll figure it out. But I would be surprised that they but fired did him because just sign a new hit. contract with AC Milan. Contracts don't really mean anything these days, anyway. Speaking of leaving Milan, uh, obviously the season ended. We'll talk about the rest of the teams, but Zlatan Ibrahimovic also left. Uh, AC Milan and he left football altogether. Retired. Absolute legend of the game, and to see him cry was very was crazy to me because he always has this persona, this godlike persona that nothing touches him, nothing phases him, he can't be hurt. To see him cry, I'm not gonna lie, it hit me. Mm -hmm. I I won't say it kind of has felt like Zlatan's been retired for a little while just because like we forgot about him, mm -hmm. right? We don't watch him week in and week out. But he still had, obviously, a massive presence in the locker room. And when you think about his career, the length of his career, where he's been from Juventus, Inter, Barca, um, and Milan uh, twice. PSG. PSG. This player, if he was in a different generation from Ronaldo or I mean, Messi. He would have been the best. He would have won. Oh, my Ball God. Ball. I think he would be even more <laughs> yeah. appreciated than what he is now. Maybe winning Ballon d'Ors. Because for the height that he has for the technical the, ability the technical ability the acrobats the, the man had it all one i think he'll go down as one of the absolute best mm -hmm. of all yeah. time and definitely in my mind this is a player that i'm going to tell my kids about hey stop what you're doing go watch Zlatan Ibrahimovic cuz he's yeah. one of the greatest i mean that plus his mentality too the only uh criticism with with him is to be honest i wish he retired when milan won the scudetto i think that would have been historical from coming to mls to coming to milan winning it within 2 years well, Milan were never expected to win it within that time frame. And if they won it there and he just retired, I think it would have been a bigger boom and much more emotional. But, like, again, it's nothing because it takes away from his incredible career. One of the best. We've got to put him one of the best ever in that category for he's done impossible. He's blessed us with impossible goals, incredible stories, and... Um, and yeah, just a cultural legend, a cultural and football legend, of course. And I'm happy that he retired with Milan. He really showed his admiration and appreciation for this club. Anto, how impressive do you think it is for Zlatan to have come back to Milan from MLS and basically helped on the field, but of course more so in the locker room with the younger players, helped you win that Scudetto last year? He was instrumental. I mean, it was not just a little thing, you know, it was sometimes the presence, but the guy, he played, he played hurt, he played, he gave, he gave it all. So surgery, surgery here and there. He wanted to be there and he wanted to contribute to the to the to the project. He wanted he wanted to get everybody involved. And when I saw everybody taking off the shirts after the game and putting everybody in Ibra shirts, I was really uh, yeah, goosebumps, my skin, right? yeah, the goosebumps when uh, when all the way. I mean, uh, what what else can you say about him? I mean, he's one of the top uh, 
the top uh, in the world. I mean, not just uh, because he played in AC Milan in Barca. I mean, his personality is very difficult to replicate. I mean, this guy, it's fearless. It's on the field and off the field. He will, he, he will be in San Remo. He will be everywhere. It's, uh, <laughs> it's the man. <laughs> I mean, the guy. He went to LA, the guy. Los yeah. Angeles in two years. Yo, he broke every record he left. Yo, his debut on that LA game, <laughs> yeah. I don't watch much MLS. Yeah. I don't watch any MLS. He went there and literally helped in the, the derby, in the derby yeah. and he yeah. came in he scored, scored two goals right away yeah. tied yeah. the game Both off two goals were and he you know, I don't know if you ever heard the story yeah, you I, might not have heard the story what do you know what he did to announce that he was going to LA Galaxy he, he, when he thought he, he said to them you you bunch of idiots go, nah. <laughs> no. go he fucking watch that. him play baseball he put, oh, that's when he left that's when he left he, yeah. he put into the he took out an ad in the yeah. Los Angeles newspapers he said LA you're, you're welcome, welcome yeah. oh wow in other words <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> that's wow. yeah, but that says, but that says but, a lot about yeah, it, what, what Ibrahim is. That's saying. hilarious. I, that's I, one of the funniest things I've let ever me seen. Tell you something. As far as people that have been saying that like, I was the best player, I think the the three the three major people that they want to see Milano do Scudetto last year were Magnan, Ibrahimovic on and off the bench, and Maldini. Three. Those three. All together. Well, it would have been good if Maldini even Leal, was staying. Leal doesn't even factor into the number four. I mean, Leal Listen, scored all the Those goals. three. Ibrahimovic, I think, is is probably a generational player also. Because since I was a kid, I've seen him play. You know, uh, even what, what he did with Ajax. <laughs> Producer, uh, producer, please. Can producer, 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 phone, producer right? not gonna pay this week. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna have yeah, another broken ankle. Taking, <laughs> stop taking pictures, also. <laughs> he was trying. He was trying so hard to he mute his so phone nervous, that he, he screenshotted. <laughs> Thirty bottles on the <laughs> But you know, Ibrahimovic. Also, if you think what his young days, think about the Ajax goal that he scored. Oh my god! You know that or he the against those England. players. You know, and then oh even my gosh. With, the bicycle kick. Yeah, or even with Inter. I mean, I remember Inter when Mancini won, what was it, in 2008? He was injured for like two games. He had to come in. Inter needed to win versus Parma, and Inter couldn't score the last day. Roma were right on the tails. And he comes in, subs in, scores two goals. Inter win the, the Scudetto that year. You know, Ibrahimovic was a major part for, for the Milan team, for the Juventus team, for the Inter team. Like everywhere he's been, even Barca, where he didn't have this great year, he still scored 20 goals and he was able to win the La Liga. So, um, you know, it's his only, I guess, issue or what what he, probably why he stayed one more year to see was he wanted to win that Champions League. It's one thing that he's mm -hmm. never been one, able to, yeah. to win. That in the World Cup, um, but yeah. World Cup as well, but... You know, no for appearances all the players in the World that Cup. he's played, you know, sucks. Um, you would think so. Yeah, it's 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 definitely something where you know, for for a player especially that's forty years old, forty one years old. Um, every day since you were a kid, you had this one goal, and you did this one thing: wake up, go play soccer, right? Go play football. So now, all of a sudden, that I think that's where the emotional part comes out mm -hmm. of you. But anyways, was like. I'm really done. Everything that I live for, mm -hmm. it's over. Is over. Like, mm. what's the next? So a lot of a lot of players struggle with He's gonna the be an next, actor. the next step. Isn't that yeah. his thing? He already something. started. He already something. started. But yeah. he should. It would have been perfect if Maldini was staying and you put Ibra into the club. You know, doing what he's already been doing within the coaching staff. You know, just not playing. That would have been a really great ideal spot. But it is what it is. Zlatan, uh, unfortunately, no more. And if no one has ever read his book, by the way. I don't read I never, much. I never read it. Michael doesn't you know read, read at no, all I either. I remember hey, convincing you, you to read. No, you know how to read? It's, uh, only for that book. <laughs> how much, how much did you like the, the yeah, book? That's like one of the only books I enjoyed reading in my wow. life. Yeah, it's yeah, a must literally. read. It's really good, honestly. Anto, I don't know if you know how to read yet, but... <laughs> I'll, we'll translate it for you, buddy. I didn't even read my, what, what I am going to do today. <laughs> we got to read it to him. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> guys, the season is over. Serie is over. We already know all the positions, actually. We don't know the, the last team. There's a play out game between Spezia and Verona because they both lost and they both tied on 31 points. Just they changed the rule in mm. uh, Serie A. It's no goal difference, no head-to-head, -head, which I think it makes it Much more better. even. And it's exciting because... You're going down to City B, counting gold differences. Yeah, yeah. For, for me, I don't like it. It's harsh. I like the play out, which will be on Sun Sunday, on Sunday right? Dutch Arena, who did it? Did they decide now? Finally. And uh, one, one big difference is it's not two legs, it's one leg, which is even more exciting. And no extra time. 
go uh, straight yeah. to pens. So that's gonna wow. I don't know if you they're guys they're gonna kill each other on the, the pitch. Just gonna be more fun than a school death or match. Uh, and do you guys have predictions of who's going? I don't who's want, staying I don't up? Want Verona. To win. I do not like both of the team because okay. they both uh, they give AC Milan so much our time. But if I had to pick up one, I want Verona so badly to go down. To go down? So oh, I yeah. want Verona to stay up. No. I think Verona will, will stay up, but I want Spezia to stay up. How about you, P? No, Verona is going to is gonna go down. They're Verona down. has been a little bit more on a high. They no. they, they should have won the game prior yeah. in the 96 minute letting a goal. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I, it's going to be tough, uh, I would say, just because of form. Hellas Verona, but I could nice. be wrong. Yeah, so we've... No, actually, you didn't yeah. say Verona. Peter, I was trying Either to think who one. you look like. You remind me of um, Ted Lasso's assistant. Just with that little thing. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch Ted Lasso? Uh, a few episodes. Did you? That. You started watching? Yeah. You didn't tell Brandon. Brandon. You look like an umpire right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you like. By the way, like little it was Pete's little birthday little. this past week. Yeah. Wow. How good he, Pete. Thank you, thank you. Your president yeah. is coming on Saturday. Woo. Who's your president? Your present. <laughs> Who's oh, your, your present? present? Oh, wow. The champions. Mm, wow. Saturday. Hopefully. Saturday. From, from hope three not. to four. Hope three not. Three to four. I hope he doesn't get a present Saturday. How are you feeling about the... How am I feeling? Huh. Terrified? You feel confident? Wow. No, I'm not terrified. I just... Listen, it's... Uh, it's. I saw Di Marco uh, use Mourinho's quote. For us, this is a dream. For Man City, it's an obsession. We have to live it. We have to be able to enjoy the game. And then, you know, no no nerves, no nothing. No expectation. When you have no expectations, you're you, going to get you, slaughtered. you going to get slaughtered. I don't think so. Uh, listen, as much think, as I want Inter I to win, we'll look slaughtered. at me. Look at me. As much as I want Inter to win, and I really mean it. <laughs> Can we keep a straight I, face? I'm going to have so much good time. I am already, I'm if already. If Inter wins, what? I'll leave what? down. I'll leave down. No, no, I want you here. Why? Because <laughs> nah. I got to abuse you. <laughs> Listen, you're not going to be happy Saturday. Put it this way. We'll see. Just, uh, you know, lock yourself inside of the house and uh, and watch the game on your house because it's not going to be. Where are you going to watch it? I don't know yet. You're not watching we'll it here. Out. Does Inter win when you watch it here? I Depends. thought that you were going to Istanbul. Uh, I'm trying, but it's hard. I got to find that. Somebody is going to pull up a surprise at the last yeah, minute. You're capable. Yeah, yeah. You're capable. You were at Milan uh, in uh, in less than the 24 hours. You see? So I got to try again. Let's see. It's like impossible with tickets. We've, we've been trying, Pete. We've been trying. It's very hard. Where in situation. the world is Peter Ugurto? <laughs> <laughs> you remember Where Where's in the world Waldo? is Car Carmen San Diego? Oh. That was a song when I was... Uh, yeah, the kids was just uh, watching cartoons. Right, What's that song? Said, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? <laughs> and this is guy. Where in the world is Peter Ugurto? It's like an eighteen hundred song or something. So like. now you Pete, watch too many cartoons. I know. Hey, listen. You gotta read. You more. gotta read. Mr. Yeah. Rogers was my favorite. Mr. Rogers. Okay, that was. Who my was that favorite. your teacher? No. Mr. Was he a Milan Rogers? fan? Didn't he go to jail? That guy. Got a jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the two shoe train. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you remember that, right? Of I grew course. up. I learned English watching Mr. Roger because Did you I, really I watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, you see, uh, 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 <laughs> my job, my job, my job. <laughs> uh, so uh, that's what I uh, instead of uh, you know, Where you going, Mike? get books, back here. Right. Get back here. This guy really walked away. I'm going to whack him. I'm going to whack him. Anyway. <laughs> I guess Mr. Rogers doesn't speak English. Mm. <laughs> is he, did it work? Is he Scottish? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yo, there was something that I saw um, with Inter mm. that maybe brings you a little bit of hope. Okay, let's hear it. So I was told this by Beppe Bergomi. Your boy. Yes. He, he told me, look into Man City's away record in the Champions League. And besides one game, they tied all their other matches. They were like 1-1s and 0-0s away from home. Their home games, they blew them out, right? There was, I think it was RB Leipzig. Uh, they were, they was 1-1 and then they won like 7-0 when they brought it back home. But away from home, sometimes they struggled. Does that give you a little bit of uh, inspiration? I, I mean, it helps that it's it's in a neutral ground, so it's you know it's not necessarily favoring Inter, but 
it's not Manchester. So that definitely is important. I think, um, you know, Man City also, uh, even the most recent game versus Man U, uh, not to, they won and they deserve to win also. But it wasn't such a clean game. So I think now, especially as the pressure is mounting, you know, there's now this, uh, and I'm going to use it again, but the obsession to win the treble, right? And for Guardiola, you know, this is something that he needs to win because everyone always says you only won with Messi, Iniesta, and company. So this is a very important game, and he's always used to, for some reason, changing something yeah, on the fly or, 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 or recreating. Holland. He's got to recreate something. So... Listen, on on every level of of, of uh, the stat sheet and everything else, Man City should win, right? But on a, on any given Sunday, as they say, like you never know what could happen. If you get one thing that goes your way, you know you score first. Mm -hmm. can, it can create a couple of uh, problems, I think, for Man City. And you know we're more of a counter attacking team, so if Man City tries to overcommit a lot of players, maybe we can be able to, to find some space. Um, you don't I'm, seem like you believe I'm it when you're saying it. I mean, uh, the odds are still against them at the end of the day, so it's going to be tough. Yeah, so yeah, we don't. But I think a, a couple of weeks ago we were talking about uh, Inzaghi's going to stick with Jericho, stick with Jericho, but I feel like a lot of people's head turn, including my own, in, in terms of Lukaku's great form, do you think... Even though I think you know, I know you're gonna say you should start Lukaku. Do you think Inzaghi is actually gonna change his the way and actually do or stick to his guns and start Jacko? So the thing is, even for me, like Lukaku right now is is on fire, mm -hmm. and we know the Lula, Lukaku, Lautaro. They they work really, they gel well. Lautaro looks a little bit more animated on the mm -hmm. field. But what I would say is, um, as far as like towards the second half, right when. You know, one of those players is going to get tired, whoever comes in, 60th minute, 70th minute. Who's going to give you that extra sprint in the last 25, 30 minutes? Lukaku. So that's the only thing that I'm going to might be over in the last 30 no, minutes. No, but that's, listen, these are things that you have to think as a coach where you got to try to understand the whole game. There's other, you know, words of wisdom that say you have to put who's, who's on fire, who's the best, who's ready to go, not look at everything. But, uh, I think with Jeko and, and Lukaku, they play very different games, mm -hmm. but they are still the same type of player as far as being a target striker, as far as being the, the big the number, number nine, one, yeah. and, and as far as goal production. You know, like if you look at their stats on goals, they they have similar stats. So it's not like to say, oh, one is complete. you know, they both have been on form. Lukaku more so right now. Yeah, he he looks healthy. Yeah, He's ready to, to run. Uh, to to be take on his man, so. Pete, do me a favor. Pull your skin out of your body <laughs> and just <laughs> talk about Pete like a, a soccer fan. Forget about that you're an Inter fan right now. Uh -huh. You have got to be kidding me. You oh. think that Inter has got a chance against this team? To me, to me, there is no Lukaku, there is no uh, La Lula, there is no Zeko. Love you guys are in delusion. Mm -hmm. You guys are not going to even get close what do you challenge. think the score is going to be? Minimum, it's a, it's going to be a, a a big failure if they win two nothing only Manchester City. So what would you what would you think that the score could be? It could be maybe a three nothing at least three to four nothing. That just yeah. Wow. Would you be surprised if Inter scored one goal? Uh, no, no, because in any given circumstances, a penalty, the ball hits the hands of a defender, or uh, a red card, or anything can happen. So you're saying there's a chance that Inter could win? Very little to I nothing. Think to score, you think not, not a win. Very what percentage out of 100? Nothing. I will give him a 5%. Wow. Jesus. It's better to play play that game. The only Pete. good things about you guys is that you are the underdog, play like the underdog, and just get it all out. Maybe because maybe it will be the advantage of Inter. Just go to the underdog and say, you know what, we lost the game, let's go and have fun. And that's it. Let's <laughs> leave it like that. Yeah. Like, what is this? You yeah. 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 This is it's you not. You're, you're it's it. like you're going on the slaughterhouse. Somebody's going to put a gun all on right, your head. All right. Why are we so intense? And then you're going to say, hey, that's it. You know, maybe the maybe the bullet is going to get, the, the gun is going to get stuck. Or whatever. <laughs> right, right, right. You're not intense. there. You're not, you're not, you have too no chance. I analogy. disagree. I think if you're in the, in the ring, you got to fight your battle. You have to be able to There's figure no out a way to win. <laughs> 
there's one battle. Ma- ah, there's only one match. Paige, you've been David watching cartoons. You you've been hear, watching cartoons. You ever hear of David and Goliath? Yeah, I did. I did watch what that. what happened? No, no, no. This is uh, those are Greek mythology, okay? <laughs> we don't believe Greek. in Greek mythology. What is Greek. it? What is it? It's biblical. Biblical, all right. I thought that everything was invented by the Greeks. <laughs> <laughs> you said an unknown. Well, okay. Uh, uh, all right. No, no chance. chance. I'm giving them no chance. All right. No chance. That's too harsh. Are we doing an official prediction now? I would say three not in Man City. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, go. Guys, go. P. One, one. Penalties. Who's going to win the penalties? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's so crazy? This is like such a weird uh, way to say it, but I think the game is it's either going to be like an absolute blowout, like a 4-0, or Inter's going to win 1-0. 1-0, zero. Zero, Just pull your, Just get your prediction. So, I know I'm crazy. Yeah, no, no, we all know that you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Please. I know I'm crazy, and I know it's not going to happen, but I, for some reason, I got a weird feeling... Every time the English celebrate so early, they say it's coming home. They think that the game's over. But this is not English. This is not it's English. An English team. Yeah. It's not English. Nobody over there is from England. I think Inter's going to win. We'll see. I'll say 2-1 two, two Inter. Wow. So no, I'm not I the only I'm delusional the only guy. I'm the only one. Uh, oh Mr. God. Producer, Mr. Producer. I'm going to pay 500 on Inter. To win, oh and my Rico, God. And the producer, is putting $500 to Inter to win. They're plus, plus 600 odds. Me. Put if you put if you put to win in ninety minutes plus six hundred to win overall plus three fifty. Wow, very good odds for Inter. Listen, it's worth a sprinkle. It's worth a couple dollars, you know. Okay, just let, in case. Let's talk at the matchup, like player to players. Okay, Manchester City on the midfield, they've been pretty much matched up. Player to player, you can't even compare anybody. No, no, the midfielder of Inter is it's at the top. I would say better Barella. than Man City's yeah. midfield. No, yeah. Barella, listen to me. Barella, if uh, Brozovic is into the... Are you watching Gundogan lately? Yeah, well, uh, good, listen to me. I get, listen to me. Inter midfield, it's not, a, it's not an easy... Uh, but, then, but we're not arguing that Inter's midfield is bad. The argument is, are they better than Man City's midfield? I say better, but listen, not, if, it's kind of comparable. But I'm just saying, which one is better? Yeah, Man City's... The but game, not by crazy, not a crazy game amount. The will be... I'm saying Inter's midfield is very good, but you're making it seem like... The game will be to take Haaland out of the game, not making anybody passing him the ball, and stopping De Bruyne. When you eliminate those two, then you give yourself a chance. Yeah, but then they got Grealish, Grealish on the other side. Grealish, Bernardo Grealish, Silva. Grealish, Grealish, Grealish is, uh, is manageable. He's he dribbles his man every not time. He's smart. It's Grealish. not that Smart. Grealish has been informed lately. I, Not I that think smart this guy. The, the, <laughs> only, the only thing that I think goes in Inter's favor yeah. is that unlike Real Madrid, because they got completely blown out, and I never would expect a team like Real Madrid to get blown out that way. Unlike Real Madrid, Inter is okay playing that style of football. They're ready to get into the mud, and they'll take you down there. They're comfortable in that position. They're comfortable defending. A team like Real Madrid never will be okay with that. So Inter will absorb all the pressure. They understand. They've done it before. They will play as compact as possible. They'll try to stop that midfield. What do you need? You need Inter to be perfect. You need Manchester City to not be perfect. You need them to be a little bit off. They could do it if if that goes that way. That's the only way Inter win. And what do they do? As Man City progress up into the field, they play a high line. Lukaku running behind counter attack. Listen, listen. That's the only way. Inter to be to do the play the game of wait wait and 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 give it a shot or a, like on a counter things like that nothing is gonna happen if it's they open be... up they'll get killed I think well the interesting thing is that Man City they like to press high so we we're usually good with moving the ball and high pressing so them. it'll be interesting especially with Onana I think Onana gives you a real advantage mm. when you need to be able to uh, feed the, the wings the Inter has make the two wings working for yeah them. so what what is interesting is because this is how I remember Atalanta. They, when they beat Manchester, and it's a different Man City, but uh, three years ago, when they were in the, the Champions League, they were playing in San Siro. I went to the game, and I saw how Man City pressed high and were literally man-marking. So Atalanta, what they did was they were able to hold that ball in the defense to try to attract the pressure, and then were launching Zapata, right, to go after the ball and, and try to beat his man 1v1. So, I mean, I think that could be something to to look into also as the Inter's game plan where they, you know, we're pretty comfortable in possession. Obviously, you don't want to risk losing the ball because Man City with numbers, they're going to be able, they, they're great. That's Guardiola's system is being able to win the ball back in, in, in quick time, you know. But Onana, can he hit Lautaro? Can he hit? 
He did it against Atalanta. He does it all the time. Yeah, he's he does really good at finding He the does bag. it all the time. So, like, that's also now an added thing that I know Guardiola, he's stuck in his way, right? He's going to play his style, his way, because I'm the best or I'm better. And maybe Inter can, can catch that mm. because of his arrogance. Listen, if the, Marco, if the Marco, I wouldn't even play uh, uh, um, uh, the Dutch guy. Uh, what's his name? Dumfries. 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 No, I wouldn't play him. To. I would but play the young wanna... kid. I would play the young no, kid. No, Who? No, no, Bella Nova. Bella, yes. No, no. yes. Yes. Yo, what okay. the? Yo, he really yo. wants them to lose. <laughs> Bella Nova, Bella Nova <laughs> for me. We know me. that you don't like Inter, but give them a chance. I think this Dumfries, he always has the tendency. He, go, he makes the run and then he passes the ball back. This Bella Nova... Once he makes the run, he cuts inside. I thought he was going to say Darmian. He's not ready yet. He's not ready yet. Darmian is not, it's not for this kind and, of game. And, and no, Darmian will play. Belanova for me can be a, a, a factor. Oh, a more like more than the Dumfries. He's you a need, kid. You need two wings to take the pressure away and to run the ball down. Yeah. For those well, watching and wondering, Antonio is a Milan fan. If you didn't tell by his shirt and by the fact that he wants Inter to start Belanova <laughs> over Denzel Dumfries. He's giving you a good advice, He wants to be 4-0. For what? Guys, we're gonna my dad is not here so we won't recap the Serie A but I think we're doing good talking about the European final since that's mm. really uh, what we've been talking about as of late we have two more to cover and then and then we'll get out of here do we do Roma first and get that out of the way yeah Roma Sevilla disappointing match heartbreaking to say the least Damn. up 1-0 and uh, man I never believe more when they went up 1-0 and Dybala scores I said to myself, this is Mourinho's game. They get the 1-0. It fell into their hands. They did it also exactly the way that Roma play. It's a lost ball, quickly playing the ball through Sevilla's high line. So it was to a T. It was perfect. And the entire first half from Roma was spectacular. They score the goal, and you never, I never expected them to lose the game after going up 1-0. Because I said they're they're witty, they're intelligent. They'll suck Sevilla in, go on a counterattack and score 2-0. They conceded mm. the goal too early into the second half. And it's an own goal. Stupid old Sevilla have, have done this to a T as well. They forced, I was looking it up, and I was like, my gosh, they've done it so many times. They forced so many teams to score own goals on themselves. Man United, they did it two times. There was another time as well that they forced an own goal. They whipped that ball in mm -hmm. to such a position that it becomes dangerous. And I think if Roma just aren't, are able to outstand that pressure, 55 minutes, it's too early, and then they stop playing. But they that's tough. They completely uh, stop playing. And that plus, uh, once the ball came out, mm -hmm. they completely went back. Before, they were very high. They were playing much higher. They were creating chances, a lot more passes. And then once you take out the ball, they shifted into a defensive thing as if they were going to defend the lead the whole time, which I thought was a complete wrong approach. Even if the ball was injured, I still would have kept him on because his mentality was always to attack, attack, attack. And it seemed like they were scared as soon as he came off. And that mm -hmm. plus, yeah, there's controversials with a handball. should have been a penalty, blah, blah, blah. But was that a penalty? Yes I, no, to me, like, it was. In Serie A, that's given every yeah. single time. Yeah, no, it's a penalty. Oh. We saw you know, it even in England. We saw yeah. Man City versus Man U. There was a handball. But you know what? Given. I said, Mike, Mike said and it right. They didn't I mean, get any yellow card. I mean, I was watching and I said, man, Sevilla was never getting a yellow card. We, I never like to talk about the referee because mm -hmm. I want to focus on what Roma could have done better. The referee, it's obvious. We all saw the game. Yeah, we know yeah. what he did. We know what we think the calls could have been. My frustration comes from that. Roma played the game. They played the game to be able to win the game. Mm -hmm. And what's so frustrating is you do such a great first half. You have the game plan. Yeah. And you stop playing after conceding a goal. You stop yeah, playing. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. didn't play their same way. And they have no plan B without Paulo Dybala. The, Belotti is god awful. Nothing, the nothing. fact that they have this guy, I can't stand Belotti. And, and then even Tammy, Tammy Abraham was come up, was a mess. Come and then when he comes off, there's nobody. And I'm thinking to myself, when's El Shirawi coming into the game? Yeah. El Shirawi. Too late. He came in. In 2023, late. he's got the most goals after Dybala. He's got more goals than Tammy Abraham, Belotti, and Solbakin combined. And it felt like they were waiting too long to put El Shirawi into this match. Sevilla. Respect to them. They're the kings of this tournament. They believed from the first minute. Their fans believed. I talked to them on the streets. They said, we already won this game. Suso said it before the match. The president, the, the coach, everyone said we already had this in the bag. And they have a winner's mentality. And they never give up. They outplay Roma physically. And, uh, you know, the game, the game. The you first see, but half, I don't agree with that. The first half was all Roma. I would say Roma did the job. But then uh, 
down the stretch, man, they didn't have anything left. When I saw Mike, like Mike said, Dybala coming out, that was it. Like turning the switch down, that, that's it. But you think Sevilla outplayed them overall? On the, on the second half, totally, totally. Totally, yeah. Yeah. total domination. Yeah. 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 Total yeah. domination yeah. the second half. Yeah. Total. Yeah. Total. Yeah. Not yeah. a little bit. Sure. It was a total and, domination. You know, with, with the Roma, I mean, the unfortunate thing is Dybala not able to play 90 minutes. He can't give you that touch of brilliance, that composure, which mm -hmm. I, I I really think, looking back at that game, that was a missing part for a lot of these Roma uh, players. Spinazzola, you know, awful. You know, awful. Aside from the shot, because that was something that's going to highlight oh or you're going to jump on, it which, which it is what it is. He hit the ball on the volley. You know, it, it, it went center. It was a central shot. But aside from that, was never able to take on his man. Lost the ball numerous of times. Yeah. There was a lack of composure. Tammy Abraham. Another player where Invisible. you have to be able to step up in these games. You're the number nine. There's nobody behind you, so you got to do it. Not able to. to he do had it. the chance to. You know, there was the ball that was sent yeah. in. That was a great ball. Oh he. I watched him score that before. I think it was against Juventus. He scored that same goal, and then the ball falls to Ibanez, and Ibanez hits it Oops. for yeah. freaking throwing. Yeah. There's chance after yeah. chance where they had the opportunities to score, and you need to be clinical in those moments. Even Pellegrini, he sent in the ball no. to Smalling in the last seconds, and Smalling hits. The crossbar. crossbar. They had the chances. That's why, yeah. for me, Roma played better overall throughout the game. And I'm just so damn disappointed that they couldn't close out the match. Yeah. I mean, the, defensively, they were they were good. They were solid, you know. Especially, you know, every attack Sevilla was giving it to them. Giving it to them. You know, they were able to make those subs. The team, they made two subs. The difference also is the subs. You know, Roma, when they look on the bench, you're like, who am I, who's going to change this mm. game? And meanwhile, Benotti. Sevilla, you have Suso Lamella coming wow. in. It's going to give you a lot. whole it fresh changed. start. It changed change. everything. On the ball, there's a sense of technical ability. There's a sense to take on the man. There's a way, there's that aggressiveness. So we got to look to find a goal. We have to score. And with Roma, you know, there was really no one that was going to step up. And, you know, the unfortunate thing is Matic, who was amazing. He this played game, a spectacular game, Matic, for me. A certain age, you know, not able to, to really last. Yeah. For Even Wijnaldum. Wijnaldum came Wijnaldum to the came match in and I said, very little. man, all right, Wijnaldum's yeah. coming in. He's got the experience. Nothing. They went backwards with, yeah. with Wijnaldum. Yeah, they got worse well, when he came in. Don't forget, Wijnaldum is a, is a defensive, more of a defensive uh, midfielder. So you need players that have the, the quality to win games. You know, I think we yeah. always look at the players that we have to be balanced, we have to be structured. But when you have quality players, those are the guys that are going to be able to get the ball and make something happen. And unfortunately with Roma, you know, Mourinho is going gonna, is gonna to say what, what he has to say. But it's to, to, to a certain extent, it's the truth because there was nobody else that was going to be on that, you know, field that was going to change the game. I question Mourinho. Maybe the approach could be something. But I just feel like there was there was... Nobody that was going to be able to resolve that game, so it was be better to just kind of sit back and, and maybe we can I'm catch sure. him on the counter or we can. Score I think it's a goal. extremely impressive that he got them to this point. Mm -hmm. When you oh, think, sure. when you look at the team, you look at the squad, and I know everyone's laughing that they didn't win the match, they didn't get into Champions League football. But when I look at that damn team, player for player, he has squeezed that towel completely. Yeah. That team is not a good team. Genuinely talking. Okay, you want to pick out one player here and that Dybala is the best player on the team. We already know that. Mm -hmm. Everyone else has taken a step back. They underperformed. You want to Ibanez. The fact that Ibanez is in this game, I can't I can't watch him play anymore. Mm -hmm. Like there are some players that I can't watch him play and even Chris Smalling who we know how he is, right? There's sometimes the ball coming in there. He has always a tendency to kick the ball and just clear it long and instead of yeah. controlling it and, yeah. and seeing out the pressure and that's what it comes down to the fine details when you want to be able to win it's having that sort of composure and I don't see it throughout the Roma side when it gets the penalties we knew the game was lost before it got the penalties because Roma don't even score their penalties in uh -huh. open game hmm. and then when you see two center backs coming up to take the, the penalties I don't know whose idea that was what do you make of the two, frustration two defenders will come up and take that oh my god no but it, the, the game was lost Jeez. I mean it Dybala it? was off you know it came it's in it's not that so look. much the defenders Italy you had no penalty you know taker. Materazzi you had these guys that stepped up to, to take the penalty so but it was it was the thing over is, before who, it who do you have to take the penalty that's that's Belotti. the biggest issue yeah so Belotti missed though against England right in the Euros how many penalties were taken straight to the middle I know you guys Keep, keep making fun of me because I said you guys are gonna have to watch most a lot of awful the penalties. penalties, awful penalties, so, and then and then it just Mancini, got topped Mancini off by penalty was just a joke. I mean, just 
Anyway, I honestly, I spoke to Roma fans all around the stadium. Mm. It was so dominated with Roma fans in mm. that stadium. I can't even explain to you. Mm. Uh, but even them, the momentum lost after the goal. They stopped. They stopped going crazy. But they dominated the Sevilla fans. They mm. were absolutely incredible. And I saw all the Roma fans. I saw so many tears. I saw young kids, oh. thirteen-year-old kids, crying their eyes out. And it was it was killing me. And I saw them, and I kept telling them, "I was like, damn, we lost. We missed this opportunity." Mm. And they all said the same thing to me. It was like clockwork. They yeah. all said, at least we got here. They said, we are so damn happy to have watched two finals in two years. One of the kids told me, the dad was there. He said, I waited to watch two finals my entire life for Roma. <laughs> you watched two in two years. Yeah, we didn't We didn't win. And I asked him about Mourinho. They said, he got us here. He got this team yeah. here. So they're very thankful. They're very proud. And honestly, I know Mourinho's got to meet with the management to see what happens. I'm still Team Mourinho in this. Yeah, what do you the make football's a, not good, but he gets his team he gets the most to out compete. Of the players. What do you make Michael Del Yacho you know, after the game into the locker room and all the stuff and going over there? I did that too, uh, hey, but you know, you're a professional. You have the but you the have the to ref, just be able to. Uh, but the ref wasn't acting like a professional leader on those calls. Uh, those well, those were professional calls. Yeah, but the thing is, the aftermath is uh, that's something that we gotta it's say. Crazy, what the Roma fans stuff. did, what certain Roma fans did oh, to the, the airport, referee yeah, yeah. and that's his family good. at the airport yeah. is disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. That is not football. That is an embarrassment. Yeah, that's mm. That is, it's such a, the guy's with his daughter and his wife and you're throwing stuff at him and they're throwing punches and you're abusing. Yeah. Yo, he's a referee yeah. at the end of the day. We're never gonna, players, fans, we're not gonna agree with the referee, but there that's, has to be some level of respect. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, uh, otherwise, soccer becomes like more of a battle than a sport. I mean, mm -hmm. this is really crazy. If somebody has to go into this kind of situation, thinking of what will happen if something it doesn't go the right way to to defend on one of the teams, that's crazy. It becomes like a challenge every time that you were to step inside of the field. So. Yeah. I am How not. did they even let him fly on like a flight like yeah, that? I'm though that was the yeah, weirdest thing. Even the security you was was really poor. Or just a, a separate of, entrance. Or like, make him wait like a couple days yeah, after, yeah, like when fans was, get out of the city. Yeah. There was a lot of issues there. I don't know yeah. logistics and all. Maybe oh, one of the ASAP with his wife and the daughters. That's whatever. not right. It's not right from the Roma fans that did that. It's uh, Roma fans. They put on a beautiful display. Mm -hmm. They followed their team. So many went to Budapest. All they traveled all the way there. They have some of the best supporters in Italy. They always make the news for how they support their team. Bad luck. Very bad luck on the ones that did that. Yeah. You know who was a good spark that came off the bench for Roma? Zaleski, I thought was very good. He came in. He did some dribbles. Uh, he faked a couple players, but then again, not enough uh, from Roma and. But I, I'm still sticking with Mourinho. I think for for what he's done, he's got to continue this project, and I really think they're they're building something. And if they can invest a little bit more and more quality players, I think you can get much more out of this Roma side. They and, spent seven million and, last year. And considering the players that stepped up last season didn't step up this season, and you say that they went to the Europa League final, I think it's a it's a big step. And their starting striker, Tammy Abraham, tore his ACL now. Yeah, but listen, yeah. Mike. So yeah. that, that means he's not there for the first half of the season. But so Marco, if you don't invest in a striker, you're yeah. stuck with Belotti, who finished yeah. an entire season with zero goals scored in the Serie A. Well, wow. shout listen, out with false nine. Marco, listen to this. Given the fact that this Fritzkins is another American uh, company, what makes you think that they're going to be spending money and that might be able even right. uh, Mourinho? If he doesn't see the the, the things, it, if he doesn't see the dose of uh, materializing, the guy's gonna go. You think he's gonna stick around? There could be a huge merry-go-round of coaches, because even Atalanta, mm. they're saying Gasperini wants to meet with the management and say, what are we doing over here too? That he's not so convinced to stay anymore. Yeah, but Gasperini might go to Napoli. I mean, I, I would love no, to see him go, go to, to Napoli. Napoli. Don't you get that it's from? It's not Napoli. I love, I love, I mean, <laughs> I will take Gasparini and AC Milan, to be honest he's with you. He's got very bad blood with Napoli. And he does? Napoli fans, oh, wow. Yeah. Mm. He said some bad things to their fans Roma before. could be then another, uh, a good fit for him. There's a lot of coaches. Spalletti's gonna be gone, obviously. Gasperini could be gone. Pioli, same. We don't know what's gonna happen with Maldini, Italiano, Allegri. Yeah. This mm. is, if and once two or three go, it starts trickling down to some of the other sides. Yeah. So I guess we'll see. The only one for sure, Sadri, is definitely gonna remain. Mm -hmm. yeah, he, he did his He kicked Tade out. out. Tade went because Sadri doesn't Really? Know. That's what the rumors are, yeah. Oh good. I don't <laughs> like I don't like Sadri. And, and, and Inzaghi. Yeah, Inzaghi is Inzaghi. Sadi yeah. and, and Inzaghi are the two that I'm 100% sure they'll stay. If you told me in the beginning of the season, I said those were the first two to go. Yeah. 
crazy how things So change. even if Inzaghi loses the Champions League, the yeah, final, like they're going to keep him? They won him. two trophies already. And they're in Champions League. League. What are trophies? What is this? The Coppa Italia? Super yeah, Coppa yeah, Coppa Italia. What trophies is you What in Milan? What is it like the a Bayes? This is Bayes trophies. What are Milan? Man? The Maldini Coppa del Nord. No, no. Coppa del Nord. No. No. <laughs> no, we have a only. We have only. Niches. Hey, they won the Scudetto last year. We have only yeah, niches. Come on. This Big. Is a this, okay, but a Scudetto Big. last year is worth more than a Super Cup and a Coppa Italia. There you go. I agree. Hello. Not to take anything away from you. I agree. Okay, but we're saying for this season. We're not talking about everything. We're hey. talking about this season. Milan didn't win anything and Inter did. You just have to say yeah, it as Okay, it but I would take a season of not winning. To win a Scudetto but last year, the, to win the season before. Is okay, it? so how far? But in the last two years, Coppa Italia used to be. Oh, uh, no one cares. Trust it's me, it's not the same anymore. Yeah, you, you see the value. semifinals that come in. The, the teams, everyone wants to win yeah, because yeah. it's a, it's silverware and it's become silverware. That's a lie. It's, it's not, not Napoli. Napoli. It's Napoli made ten changes well, in the Coppa Italia. You see, <laughs> well, they they, <laughs> they got didn't four. care. <laughs> uh, okay, last final, which is Wednesday, Fiorentina against West Ham. So we're over. One right now with the Italian teams in the finals. Fiorentina are going up against West Ham. West Ham very underperformed this year in the Premier League. 14th place is where they ended. But in the Conference League, they've been spectacular. Yeah. They didn't lose a game. They had more wins in the Conference League than they did in Premier League. Wow. Just That's to crazy. show you, they have a lot of big players. A lot of players that also we know. Paqueta, Scamaca, Ogbona. Ogbona, Scamaca, as you said. Declan Rice is one of their you know yeah, top Rice. names. Antonio. Mm-hmm. Antonio. Marcos, Marcos Antonio, right? A little bit it's better than you. It's not as good as me. It's not as good as me. David right? Moyes is their coach. But this Fiorentina side, I feel very confident in. I feel like uh, this Fiorentina side is European. They're built to compete in Europe. The character that Italianos brought to the squad, they went, you know, you think about going away to Basel. And I was reading all the newspapers in Florence, what they were talking about, and all over Italy. And it seemed like, wow, all right, Fiorentina's not going to be able to win. They're going away from home. They had such a mentality that they said, we don't care where we're playing. Mm -hmm. They took the game to Basel, and it should never have even gone to overtime. That's how well they played. They had the problem in the beginning of the season with not scoring goals. They want to outscore you. They play a beautiful style. They create countless amount of champion uh, chances. I think on Wednesday, they're going to do their job. They need to be clinical. They could beat this West Ham side and qualify for Europa League because this is their next opportunity and to win a European competition for the first time in 62 years. Hey, listen, uh, we have uh, some stake into this game in terms of a personal uh, friendship that we have with Joe, with uh, Rocco and uh, with all the the, 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 the Florence uh, fans. So uh, I have the pull for Fiorentina this time. I mean, I'm not going to be able to pull for Inter because uh, I'm one of the biggest uh, Inter hater in the oh, face of the hurt. So, you want to uh, talk about Fiorentina? Fiorentina, I think they got a good, good, good chance. I would say good 75 t- uh, chances, uh, 75% chances. Wow, to 75. Yeah. I was going to say 50 50. No, 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 no. It's a better team. It's a better team. The midfield that they have, it's second to no one, even in Italy. Hey, they have not, nothing but top midfielders. And just because there's a Berez in the midfield. No, nah, wait, Castrovilli. Castrovilli is going to number 10 on his shirt, too. He's going to have to just honor the, the, the number. Uh, and he's from Bari. Thank you for uh, for reminding all the crowds over here. And, uh, hey, listen, they got uh, Bonaventura. They got Castrovilli. They got uh, uh, Nico Gonzalez Amrabat, has Nico been on Gonzalez, fire. They got Dodo. They got a lot of... They got a lot of uh? Don't forget about Cabral. Cabral. Uh, so, Jovic. So, uh, Jovic, yeah. Uh, hey, Listen, when the guy, was, when the guy, he was awful against Basel. When Basle. the guy wakes up on the right side of the bed, <laughs> I'm telling you, he can do a lot of damage. They gotta roll him his over. Be, his bet's <laughs> against the wall this season. <laughs> what do you think so, about the game, Mike? Uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be 50-50. West Ham, we know how tough they can play, especially in conference. They've been playing amazing, but Fiorentina have a very good fighting chance. Like I said, I could see, I could see it going both ways, but I, I do think Fiorentina are gonna want a more. Uh, I think they're gonna. This is something that they're uh, that for them to crave. And if if they win this, they go directly in Europa League, which would be an incredible, incredible achievement. Same for, for West Fiorentina. Ham, though. Let's just remind yeah, everybody exactly. they finished 14, so they need this Europa League to yeah. save their season. Yeah. Um, but if they get this win here, I think you you would say this Fiorentina uh, season has been a success, mm-hmm. and um, you you get some good money and, and shop in the mercato. So I think this definitely would be a huge step forward for the management. We all know Comiso, Joe Barone, of course, like Antonio was saying. And, of course, we're rooting for them. And 
I think they can do. I think they can pull away with. Uh, it's going to be a very tight game, but I think they have no, what it takes to do. It. Italiano is a better strategy to right the, the money that you get from the conference, you, the, you yeah. can go shop at the Bancarelli. It's, You're it's not going to be able to shop. Uh, yeah, it's I not know, a lot, we're not uh, like you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but no, jokes aside, Fiorentina this year, mm-hmm. you know, they've kind of been up and down, but their recent form has been amazing. And they've always played the top teams mm-hmm. very, very tough. Good point. Play I mean, good point. Especially, I look at it in, from the Inter lens. They, you know, could have easily won both games. They could have easily, mm-hmm. like, really brushed Inter aside the way that they would press us and give us a lot of difficulty in, in playing our game. So when you do that with Champions League finalists, now, you know, I think that they have the quality and have the ability as a team to be able to compete with anyone. Right now, what happens in a final, but is do you have those players step up to the challenge? Right within this Fiorentina team, uh, maybe Jovic with Frankfurt, maybe one, uh, uh, you know, European Cup. Yeah. I don't know of anybody else off the top of my head. I mean, right Lankovic now. probably played I mean, in Lankovic. higher pressure matches, yeah. right? For Serbia, played in the World Cup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So trying like, to think higher, just trying high to think, yeah, just trying to think. Uh, Bidagi's some of this been one. around a little yeah. bit. I don't know if he's played in finals. But. So, so that's one part that I would say. Like, are they up for the challenge? Going to be able to win? I'm Rabat for Morocco. 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 So, you know, they 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 have something here. West Ham is a team in the Premier League. You know, big name, big market, big. You know, London have the money, and they also haven't won in a long time. I don't know exactly the years, but. They're yeah. going to look at this as an opportunity to get into Europa League and win something. So it's it's a final. And, you know, like everyone else uh, says, like the finals, you, you have to win them. Italian that, is a better counts. coach than, uh, than the coach of West Ham. I agree. So, uh, I who's agree. the coach of West Ham? I don't even know. To be honest <laughs> so how do you know he's a better coach? Because well, I know. Said. I know. If you, if you have 14 plays, it doesn't really say much. You're almost in relegation zone over there. <laughs> so, I uh, mean, in England, it's definitely... there's. I mean, to get a Europa yeah, League spot no. in England is pretty who's tough. Who's the coach of West Ham? David Moyes. Moyes. Oh, okay, he was from uh, Manchester United yeah, uh, a while back. Yeah, another one of those, you know. All tutto Don't. fumo niente rosto, to say in <laughs> Italian. <laughs> All, All smoke, smoke no, no fire. fire. No fire, yeah. The one thing I was reading tactically, I can't be 100% uh, convinced yet because I there's still a couple of days I didn't fully do all the research yet. But what I was reading a little bit is that uh, West Ham play a very like catenaccio type of approach. They don't take the game towards you. So just for people to understand tactically how the game is going to be going, Fiorentina are the complete opposite. They go for it with everything. They press you. They suffocate you. So the game will definitely aesthetically look towards Fiorentina doing well, but at the end of the day, you need to finish your chances. We saw with Roma, they were not able to finish their chances. We saw Fiorentina with Inter in the Coppa Italia final, not able to finish your chances. Granted, Inter's a much better side than West Ham are. That's why I have the confidence that Fiorentina will go on to win. Hopefully. If there's any Italian team with this finals, the team that have the most, that I'm most convinced <laughs> with like, is Fiorentina. Just like this guy. Listen, look at the way Fiorentina finished the Campionato. <laughs> They won with a decisive win. I mean, uh, those guys, they're not really, they're relentless. They, they have, they, the focus has not, has not, <laughs> you know, moved one inch on either side. I think they laser focus on the game. I think they're going to go over there and they're going to take Italiano it. Italiano the also, this is his showing to all of the world. He's mm-hmm. an incredible coach. The man went from Serie D mm-hmm. to European final in five years. Yeah. From Serie D every year. Since he became a professional coach, he got his team promoted from from everywhere up to Serie D. He then he took Trapani and Serie C consistently. He took Spezia to Serie A in his first time ever. Spezia made it as a club, and then mm-hmm. he brought Fiorentina back to getting two European finals for the first time in sixty two years. The man gets he you know he gets hungry at the challenge. He he. He gets energy from it. So he's a spectacular coach. He deserves to be recognized. I want the world to hopefully watch this game. And I will say I've changed my mind completely about the Conference League in the past year or two. Mm. When this was announced, I said this is another game, another tournament that means nothing that we're just going to waste time with. I have to say it's a very good opportunity for teams here to put themselves, play high-level matches, bring more excitement, bring glory back also to Italy and to Serie A teams. And if we could get two Italian teams to win back-to-back, this could be a competition that all of our clubs start seeing as the opportunity to getting into the Europa League. I would be happy with Fiorentina only win. Okay? You're a Grinch. I'm a Grinch? Yeah. All right, call me the Grinch. I like that. 
All right, guys. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Ciao, and guys. the next time we have uh, my dad, we'll do a full recap of the entire Serie A season. Mm. Ciao, ragazzi. All right.